or in the cell 1. ATP is the energy source used by cell. It has a sugar ribose, adenine, nitrogenous bases, and base and the tri triphosphate group, 3 phosphate. That's, all, that's why it's called ATP. And when you eat food, your digestive system is going to turn the food into sugar that's your, and become your blood sugar. And those sugar will be taken in by cells. Your cells are going to turn those blood sugar into ATP. That's the energy source. And when you exercise, your muscle is going to turn those ATP, uh, use it as an energy source. So you're going to break this covalent bound. And when you break this covalent bound, the energy can be released and the cell can use it. And now it becomes a low energy molecule, that's the ADP, because you only have two phosphate group. And after you exercise, you, you rest, and your muscles are not doing nothing. They're going to turn those ADP, low energy molecule, add the phosphate group, and back to the ATP triphosphate. So the next time when you exercise, and you can, you can have ATP to use. And now let's focus on the cell membrane. The cell membrane is mainly used uh, the phospholipid bilayer, so it's a double layer structure. Last time we talked about it. And you also have membrane protein. This membrane protein have different functions. Some of them for immune function, like your immune system be able to recognize that's your body cells, leave it alone, or that's your foreign cells, kill it. And it turns out they just look at those membrane protein. And they usually combine with the sugar, so sometimes it's called the, uh, the sugar protein, that's this one. And this, this protein, its function is, is to make the molecule move in, move out, so they can be an ion channel, can be a carrier. We will talk more about it the next time. So today let's focus on the phospholipid. It's a, it's a lipid by layer structure. So the inside, we call the ICF, intracellular fluid, and outside we call the ECF, extracellular fluid, they're all water. And that's your cell membrane. Cell membrane is made of phospholipid, so it turns out it's not permeable for all molecules. We call it semi-permeable. So its permeability depends on the molecule. Some molecules can go through, others could not go through. So we call it selective permeable. And the anal analogy is like this. So if this cell membrane, and that's the molecules, if nothing can go through, we call this completely impermeable. And your cell membrane is like this. Okay, you have select, uh, it's, it makes some molecules go through. And we call this semi-permeable. So some molecules can go through, others could not. And that's your cell membrane. So in your body, every living cell, their cell membrane is like this. So they're facing some challenge, including, okay, this molecule, they can go through. Uh, what about this? They could not go through, and if your cells need it, they may need to find some way to make it go through, like the glucose, the blood sugar. They need to go through the cell. The cell can use it, but they could not pass through the cell membrane, so they need some helper, and that's the membrane protein. And let's look at the membrane protein. They have a lot of different functions. Uh, the one we're going to focus about, about today, that will be this one, transport protein. It makes the molecule be able to go in, go out. But they also have other functions. So quickly, we're going to talk about the cells, how, do, how they communicate. They release the chemical molecule called the ligand. This can be the neurotransmitter. This can be the hormone. And the cell needs to have a receptor response to it. So we have the receptor protein. And this is called the identify protein, uh, identify marker. And this protein is for your uh, immune system to recognize that's your cell. So you will leave it alone. And that's not your cell, so immune system will attack it. And sometimes they make, make a mistake. So they look at this, they make a mistake, they attack it. It turns out it's your own body cell. And we call this autoimmune disease. And sometimes there are enzymes. Enzymes you learn that in intrabio, uh, that's the the proteins which will trigger some chemical response in your body. And you also have the structured protein, like maintain the skeletal cytoskeletal system. It's like the bone inside the cell, so they maintain the structure. Or adhesion protein. Quickly in unit two, we we'll talk about this. Like your skin cells, they're able to glue together because of the adhesion protein. So they have different function. So today we're going to mainly talk about this one. 
uh, what decide the permeability, what molecule can go through, what molecule could not go through the cell membrane. A factor, smaller one, size. So the smaller one can go through the cell membrane, and the bigger one could not go through the cell membrane. The second one, the charge. Uh, your cell membrane like uncharged particle. So if it's a charged particle, like ions, those charged particles, even though they are small, they could not go through the cell membrane. So they need helper, and the helper would be the ion channel. The third one, lipid solubility. So this molecule, if it's lipid or lipid soluble, and the cell membrane is made of phospholipid, which is a lipid, so they can easily go through the cell membrane. Uh, if not, well, they, they need to find some helper, or they could not go through the cell membrane. And what's the driving force for the molecule to move through? First one, concentration gradient. Concentration gradient is a big word to say concentration difference. Uh, I break a bottle of perfume, and after 30 seconds, all, all the students in the classroom smell it. And the reason is the molecule, the gas molecule, perfume molecule, just go from the high concentration to the low concentration area. And the same here, you have the molecules high concentration outside, low concentration inside. It naturally want to go from high to low, and concentration gradient is the driving force. The second one called electrical gradient. And this one is, you have a lot of electrolytes in the body. Electrolytes are the fancy word to say ions. When they start to flow, well, they have charge, so they will create an electrical gradient. And in your body, the ions are like this. You have high, so it's not equal, it's high sodium outside, low sodium inside, high potassium inside, low potassium outside. That's the natural environment. And when you calculate the charge, so if we calculate the charge, inside is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You have 8 positive charge. And outside, you have 9 positive charge. So it turns out that outside you have more positive charge than inside. So if you look at the concentration gradient, yeah, inside is high potassium. And outside is high sodium, that's the concentration gradient. And, but when you look at the electrical gradient, well, it's actually outside has more positive charge than inside. And that's exactly how your cells are facing. A healthy, a normal healthy cells is high sodium out and high potassium in. And also inside is more negative than outside. So you have concentration gradient, you have electrical gradient. And the force to trigger a transport, you have the passive force. So the passive force is they, they are driven by the several factors we just talked about. It's driven by the concentration gradient. Uh, it's driven by the, the electrical gradient. So that's like a passive force. So that's like I put the molecules on the top of the hill. It naturally moves down. So this is the passive force. And passive transport, like they are driven by the concentration gradient. And this would be the case. But if I move the molecule from low to high, this time you are working against the concentration gradient. And we call this active force. You can do it, but well, you're going to work hard. And the cells, if they need to move the molecule from the low concentration area to the high concentration area, well, the cell need to use energy. And the energy is the, f the first slides we talk about. That's the ATP. So the cell need to use ATP to make this happen. And we call this active transport. And another energy, kinetic energy. That's every molecule, they randomly move when the temperature is not absolute zero degree. Absolute zero degree is minus 273 uh, Celsius. So it's pretty low temperature. If the temperature is not in that degree, and that's the degree no molecule move, and most of the time the temperature is higher, and the molecules start to move, and the higher the temperature, the molecule move faster. So that and this kind of energy, kinetic energy, and that's the main energy for concentration gradient because well the molecules high concentration outside, low concentration inside, and this kinetic energy they randomly move. So eventually they want to go from high to low. 
And in this case, the molecule naturally go from high to low, and with the cell membrane, it just goes through the cell membrane from high to low. We call this simple diffusion. So what molecule can use simple diffusion? They just go from high to low, and any molecule they can freely diffuse through the cell membrane, like the gas molecule, oxygen. And this happens in your body. Uh, the oxygen in your lung pass to your blood, which goes through simple diffusion because the oxygen level is higher in your lung compared with your blood. And CO2 will go from your blood back into your lung, also driven by the concentration gradient. So simple diffusion, you use the, uh, for those molecules, they can, they can freely pass through the cell membrane. And this is simple diffusion. So you put the molecule, uh, into an environment, it naturally go from high to low, simple diffusion. When does it stop? It stops when there's no concentration gradient, and that's when it reaches the equilibrium. So when there's no concentration gradient, that's when the diffusion stops. So what's the factor affect simple diffusion? The first one, as we said, concentration gradient. So this molecule goes from high to low, and it stops when there's no concentration gradient. The second factor, surface area. Because the, the simple diffusion, the molecule needs to go through the, the cell membrane, so the bigger surface area, uh, the better. And it, in your lung, they, you have a lot of this air bubble called alveoli. And it turns out you have millions of these alveoli. So when we look at the surface area of your lung, it's actually half of the tennis court. It's about 1,200 square feet. And why you need such a big surface area in the lung? For gas diffusion, so for the gas exchange. And because surface area is a big factor for diffusion. And when the lung shrink, pneumothorax happens, and the patient could not get enough oxygen. The reason is because the surface area decreases. The third factor, lipid solubility. And the reason is the cell membrane is made of phospholipid. So if the molecule can easily dissolve in lipid, it's easier to go through the cell membrane. Like a steroid hormone that is made of steroid. And steroid is, is one kind of lipid. So steroid hormone, you can simple diffusion, go through the cell membrane. Next factor, molecular weight. And it's, it's the same for molecular size. So for small molecule, CO2, molecular weight is only 44. And it's a small molecule, so it can go through the cell membrane. Glucose, 6 carbon, 12 hydrogen, 6 oxygen. Total molecular weight is 180. So it turns out glucose is too big to go through the cell membrane. And your cells need glucose. So your cell will use glucose carrier to help them to move through the, the cell membrane. And the last one, distance. Diffusion works pretty well for short distance, not for long distance. So in your lung, that's where the gas molecule diffusion happens. And they want to facilitate the process. So it turns out they make the distance very, very small. So in your lung, there's those alveoli, they use those one layer of cell called simple squamous epithelium cells. You're going to learn that in unit two. So it's only one layer and pretty thin cells. In the blood, that's the capillary. Capillary only have one layer, the inner lining, only one layer. So the distance is pretty small for diffusion to happen. If you have lung edema, you have water increase the distance, or you have fibrotic lung disease, usually caused by, uh, by the dirty air, like people work in a minefield for their whole life. They turn the lung tissue into scar, and scar is pretty thick. They compromise diffusion because that now the distance increase. So people with fibrotic lung disease, they have to use the oxygen uh, mask because their, their diffusion being compromised. Okay, let's take a short break.